Good day to the attendees of today's session. I am Dr. Kate Leritana, and I will be talking about the effect that the COVID-19 pandemic had on HIV service delivery, ways we cope, and how we can learn from these two pandemics as we try to coexist. This is not news. Four years ago, we had the fastest growing numbers of new cases in the Philippines. Two years after that, we now have the fastest growing numbers of new HIV diagnosis in the world. Aside from that, the new cases being diagnosed become younger as time passes. As reflected in this chart in red and orange bars, 80% were young people. The median age of diagnosis is 28 years old. Another unfortunate fact is that despite HIV medications being provided for free, only 61% of the population are documented to be on antiretrovirals or ART. 39% are either alive yet not on ART and are lost to follow up, migrated out of the country and hopefully are seeking treatment elsewhere, or are dead and unreported. The HIV care cascade or the care continuum is a public health model that shows the journey that a patient who undergoes HIV testing goes through. It covers the path of someone who tests positive for HIV and someone who tests negative. The goal is to achieve a community with a low HIV prevalence. Because of advances in medicine, both the person living with HIV and the HIV negative individual contribute to this outcome. For the positive path, this takes him or her from diagnosis to medication and treatment retention to achieving and maintaining viral suppression, which means having an undetectable HIV viral load that prevents transmission of disease to the sexual partner, even in the absence of condom use. This is emphasized in the U equals U campaign, or undetectable is equal to untransmissible, thus increasing survival, improving quality of life, and preventing community transmission. UN AIDS in 2016 challenged every country in the world to achieve 90-90-90 by the year 2020. This meant that 90% of PLHIV should know their status by taking an HIV test and that 90% of diagnosed PLHIVs should be on ART and that 90% of those on ART should be virally suppressed or undetectable. Our scores by the end of 2020 was 68, 61, 94. Although I should mention that not all PLHIV in the Philippines have done a viral load due to lack of access to this test. Of the 17% who have, 94% are undetectable. Definitely, we have a lot to catch up on when it comes to testing and treatment. We have learned that once we are on treatment, there is a good chance that people achieve viral suppression. And then came COVID and then the lockdown. In March 2020, we were dealt with a major blow that could have the potential to unravel the gains of the past decades. As early as World AIDS Day, December 1 of 2019, it was predicted that the pause in human movement brought about by COVID-19 could be fatal. A six-month disruption of life-saving ART could lead to more than half a million extra deaths from AIDS-related illnesses in the epicenter of HIV in the world, which is Sub-Saharan Africa. The outline of my talk will include the extent of health service disruption of COVID on HIV, the impact it had on service providers and healthcare workers, system readiness, and adaptive measures. The Asian survey conducted by Gilead Sciences revealed that 51% of physicians experienced disruption of HIV care in terms of frequency of visit and patient load. 15% of respondents said that visits were delayed or rescheduled due to closure of the clinic or physicians themselves not being able to report to the hospital. The Global Fund noted that redirection of patients from one facility to another and reduction of clinic services were reasons reported by facilities for decreased patient attendance. 
this may hold true for HIV clinics located in tertiary hospitals that focus services towards COVID patients. Reasons reported by respondents from the community for visiting the clinics less included fear, mistrust, and uncertainty of getting infected with COVID from their facility visits, disruption in public transportation, and a lockdown or stay-at-home order. These reasons are relatable to a great majority of us. HIV testing in the Philippines is accomplished within the facility and by outreach workers using community-based screening, which utilizes the rapid test, which has been very helpful in increasing the reach of HIV testing because it yields results in less than five minutes without the patient needing to go to the facility. By the end of 2020, there was a massive 61% decrease in tests compared to the previous year. Decrease in testing produced a 37% decrease in new HIV diagnosis. Added to the lack of testing, the lack of counselors or peer educators who would usually accompany the patients to the HIV clinics contributed to the 28% decrease in newly enrolled patients. Referrals are critical for helping to prevent HIV transmission in the community at large. And so this disruption could result in people being unknowingly infected and HIV patients not accessing the treatment they need, leading to further health issues and ongoing transmission of HIV. The treatment gap is defined as the difference that exists between the number of people who need care and those who receive it. The HIV treatment gap increased to 19% during the time of COVID. You would wonder with this lockdown going on, do people even have sex? The Department of Health conducted a convenience sampling survey among 838 men who have sex with men. The survey revealed that frequency of anal sex did not change significantly compared to the previous year. Even in the months of strict implementation of enhanced community quarantine and after it was lifted, it even increased. With this data showing decrease in treatment coverage and increase in treatment gap, coupled with continued risk, we would expect an increase in HIV infections. Let's talk about ART supply. The Department of Health reported that almost half of HIV treatment hubs experienced critical to no ART supply during the early part of the lockdown only 45% of facilities had complete stocks. This was echoed by the World Health Organization in its April and June report. See here the Philippines is in the red, reporting disruption in supply. In March to April, export of ARTs were barred in India as the world's number one manufacturer of, and exporter of generic ART the possibility of India closing its doors would have been detrimental to us. We realized that despite being benefactors of this whole process, any disruption in manufacturing, shipping, and transportation brought about by COVID would be perilous to the HIV program. The lockdown and standstill of transportation posed a big problem to the Filipino people living with HIV and their concerns centered on access to ART. Majority of the concerns are complaints about transportation and delivery, distance of travel to their treatment facility, the presence of military checkpoints and crossing borders during quarantine, and stock availability. The lack of mobility was such a problem that the Department of Health estimated that it would take PLHIVs living in geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas about 21 hours on foot at most to reach the nearest treatment hub. This problem was made more acute for residents residing in Cagayan Valley, Central Luzon, Calabarzon, Central Visayas, and Mindanao. This problem led to efforts from clinics and community-based organizations to think outside the box. If patients could not come to the clinic, the medications were eventually shipped to them. 
a crowdfunded project initiated by the community called Arvayanihan was launched. In partnership with ANCAS, free medication delivery was offered to patients who could not afford shipping. The clinic staff provided continued services in their facility or alternate venues, and even through mobile means. HIV self-testing was also offered as an alternative to facility-based and community-based testing. Personal visits shifted to online consultations, whether via video calls, phone calls, chatting, and texting. This was echoed by the Asian survey, where higher adoption on telehealth and remote refilling was seen in the Philippines compared to other country respondents. Even at slow internet speeds, the Philippines has the potential to be early adopters of e-health. Because of the impact of the pandemic on HIV services, the NCR DOH Regional Office drafted a policy to augment support, such as allowing patients to be enrolled in any facility, even from abroad, to refill transiently at any treatment hub to ensure their continuous ART supply. Community-based organizations and nonprofit organizations address the financial concerns of PLHIV by various charitable activities. Prevention activities were also continued by providing commodities such as lubricants and condoms and COVID protective supplies. COVID definitely impacted service providers and healthcare workers. The Global Fund Survey reported that 50% of facilities across Africa and 37% across Asia recorded COVID-19 infections among their staff. All types of health workers were affected, further emphasizing the need to provide training, protection, and PPE to healthcare workers at every level. Health facilities also experienced staff shortages due to the sudden surge in COVID-19 patients. This was further complicated by staff absences because health workers were either sick with COVID or under quarantine, had other related, uh, unrelated illnesses, had limited transportation due to the lockdown, and fear of violence targeting health workers. 67% of facilities across Africa and 69% across Asia report that up to 10% of staff were absent over the period of April to September of 2020. Only 45% of facilities surveyed had at least four of the essential items of PPE like masks, disinfectants, gloves, and hand sanitizers. In Africa, only 38% of health facilities have enough PPE for all health workers. Of these facilities, only 61% had surgical masks for all workers. In Asia, only 57% had enough PPE for all workers. Resilient and sustainable systems for health are the essential foundation to fighting infectious diseases. Whether it's about ending HIV as an epidemic, whether it's fighting new pandemics like COVID-19, or preparing for responding to future health threats. So the question, were we ready? We were not. We were forced to provide differentiated service delivery suddenly. And the definition of differentiated service delivery is so beautiful. Yet I see it as a silver lining in this situation. We were forced to think of the patient, to provide client-centered care, when in the past, we probably weren't. We gave now half a year's worth of medication to the patient. We sent it to them. We conducted consultations without their presence. We met them where they were. There actually is a lot of literature that mentions the concept of learning from the HIV pandemic. And here are the most important key concepts. Before we move forward, we have to know how the disease works, how it is transmitted and managed. Unnecessary and wasteful recommendations stem from wrong information. Correct information based on scientific evidence is a must. Having a resilient and sustainable health system depends on health workers and community health workers' safety and their ability to do their job. COVID directly threatened this. We should provide training, protection, PPE, 
tools and facilitators for services to be conducted at formal and informal settings. As we manage the disease, we should anticipate inequities. We feel that right now with COVID-19 distribution among countries. Just like in HIV, COVID will have marginalized communities. The global coalition of healthcare leaders should ensure universal access to treatment and prevention of the disease and spotlight vulnerable communities. At the same time, treatment, attention should be given to upholding human rights along the treatment process. I must admit that we are not doing a good job here the way COVID patients are being treated right now with isolation and dying alone. And that is because our knowledge is incomplete regarding um, the disease. In the early days of HIV, people also died alone. People were isolated. We should also challenge the stigma surrounding the disease. It is so glaringly obvious right now how COVID patients and suspects are stigmatized and discriminated. Why do we run, hide, close our doors, and shoo away these people? Again, it brings us back to lack of knowledge of the disease. We are still fighting HIV stigma and discrimination, but the world is now a little bit kinder to people living with HIV. It is not yet to patients with COVID. To tie it all up, we need effective leaders from the global and national venues. Community should be involved and various society sectors should be represented. This is not purely a medical effort, nor should it be purely a military or administrative one. Multidisciplinary engagement is crucial. Despite challenges in the provision of HIV services, we have found ways to continue provision of life-sustaining services. Many of these ideas came from the community themselves. Although these innovative approaches have risen out of epidemic necessity, they are worth considering as key components in the future of Philippines HIV policy implementation. The COVID crisis provides an opportunity to look at our weaknesses, to eschew old practices that obviously aren't working for the patient and may just be convenient for providers. Let us think, why is the community always coming up with ways to do things better? Maybe because we might have not been doing it right all along. To quote the paper of Irene Kintalang from Brown University, entitled Reimagining the Future of HIV Service Implementation in the Philippines Based on Lessons from COVID-19, it is instructive to reflect on innovative practices adopted by community-based organizations in the context of the COVID-19 crisis that have been made to ensure the continued provision of treatment, care, and support services. Although the immediate acute challenges imposed by the COVID-19 crisis might abate with time, there will likely emerge other epidemiological, natural, or human-made crises that restrict healthcare and CBO capacities to provide life-sustaining HIV services. The Philippines must not be caught unprepared for dealing with these eventualities and must reimagine and invest in more innovative, assertive, and sustainable HIV service delivery strategies. That is my challenge to the people who can make a difference by influencing policy, without which these great ideas will fade like the bushfire after the wind dies. Let this pandemic not be an episode of Mingas Kogon. Thank you for your kind attention.